First things first, this will not be my typical YouTube video. This will be something unusual for me, uh, but it is a video that I felt compelled I needed to make. It's about a situation that happened to me recently in my life, uh, my work life actually, and it does have some impact on the YouTube channel. A couple of days ago, I was informed by one of my supervisors at work that a woman had written a letter to our corporate office complaining about me. Complaining that I was following her around our store, I work in retail, that I was following her around and that I made her feel uncomfortable and that I must have thought she was stealing because she was black. She was an African-American woman, apparently black and pregnant. That's how she described herself in the, in the report, the letter she wrote. Essentially, she called me a racist. I'm racist. I was following her all over the store everywhere she went, and I made her feel uncomfortable. Obviously, I must have thought she was a shoplifter because she's black, and as a white person, I must have these kind of racial hang-ups where I think all black people steal. She wrote a very passionate letter about the plight of the black people and how I made her feel uncomfortable and how she didn't appreciate that and how she would never shop with our company again. Now, when my supervisor came to me and informed me that somebody had reported me to our corporate office, um, the, that I followed this pregnant black woman around our store, and essentially being a racist, I'm thinking she's shoplifting, and I made her feel uncomfortable or whatever. Uh, two things. First, I didn't say anything to my supervisor other than, okay, thanks for letting me know. Uh, my supervisor, by the way, is a black woman. Uh, the second thing is, I don't remember this incident actually happening. Now, my job, I am not in loss prevention, so me following around a potential shoplifter is an unusual event. It doesn't happen too often, I, I should remember the incident if it just happened a few days ago. I should remember following around a pregnant black woman all over the store, the way she describes in the letter. But I don't. So I don't remember this incident at all. I'm, I'm actually quite confused about it, to be honest. And, you know, it's, it's not unusual for me to not remember things that happened more than a few hours ago uh, in work, in life. Uh, many times I'm, I'm not operating at 100%. You guys know that. You guys often comment on the videos about how oftentimes I look very tired, how I looked overworked. And you guys tell me I need to slow down, take more time for myself and whatnot. And that is true. Uh, the last couple of years especially, I put in a ton of hours at real jobs and of course at this job here. And many times I am operating far less than at 100%. But still, this is something I should remember. This, I mean, this is a big thing, right? I should remember uh, following this, this pregnant black woman around, you know. <laughs> I, I don't remember anything, but anyway. So my supervisor lets me know about this, and we have cameras, of course, at the store. People are reviewing it. No doubt people at our corporate office have already reviewed the cameras. I've checked out some of the footage, and basically I'm working in my area. I have a certain department that I supervise over the store, and I was working in that department all day in this one section of the store. All day. So when the lady says I followed her around, no, she came to my department. I was already there. Uh, I was stocking something, building something, some display or something, moving stuff around. I was constantly moving really between two points. So I'm constantly moving. And maybe she thought as she was moving like from uh, one rack of clothes to the next or one display to the next. And I'm constantly moving too. maybe I'm moving around so I could eyeball her. I'm not exactly sure what her thought process on that, but at no point really, if I'm watching the video, am I really concerned about her? I'm only concerned about one thing, uh, getting the job done that I was assigned that day and then coming home. <laughs> and that was the only thing. If anything was crossing my mind, is just get what I needed to get done and get the hell out of work and come home and relax. And that's typically all, all that's on my mind. Now, so my supervisor comes to me, lets me know about this, and I mentioned that I, my only response is, thanks for letting me know. And the reason that is, is because that should always be your response anytime you're accused, really, of anything, but especially when you're accused of one of the isms. Racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, whatever. Whatever ism somebody throws at you, don't even try to defend yourself. Uh, it, it's pointless. And I say it's pointless because... 
Like somebody can call you an idiot, for example. If somebody calls you an idiot, does it really matter? No, that's just one person's opinion. Uh, opinions vary. But when somebody throws out something like, you're a racist, is that an opinion? Uh, many, many people assume it's not. Many people assume when somebody charges somebody with one of the isms, like racism, that it must be true. That tag, racist, that tag tends to stick. So that's why so many people throw it around, uh, because it's, a, it's the perfect way to, to get at somebody. Now, the interesting thing is you can't really defend yourself against a charge of racism, hence why you don't even try. Never try to prove that you're not a racist. For example, my supervisor comes to me and says, hey, somebody accused you of being a racist. Well, naturally, many people's first inclination is to try to defend themselves. Of course, I'm not a racist. I have black friends. Let me tell you about my black friends. I dated this black girl one time. I listened to rap music. I have a Jay-Z CD in my car, etc. Whatever ridiculous arguments you come up with. But the more you try to defend yourself, the, the shadier you look. I mean, you start do going down that road and people immediately think, oh yeah, he's a racist. So don't even try to defend uh, charges of racism or sexism or any of the isms. Uh, it, it's pointless to do so and only incriminate yourself, really. Now, the funny part about this story is, you know, going back and watching the video, I, I wasn't following this woman around. She It was all in her mind. And... Because of that, the funny part of this story is actually that the woman who reported me was the one that was racist, not I. She did so because she has some sort of notion that because I'm white, you know, I must have this preconceived idea that all black people are criminals and thieves, shoplifters. She naturally assumed because I'm white, I must think that because that's what she has been programmed to think. What may seem more shocking to many of you, and this has happened many times in my life, this woman profiled me. This black woman profiled me as a white guy, especially as a bald-headed white guy that's often dressed rather professionally, uh, somewhat physically fit. People see me, especially black folks, but all races really, and they assume that I must be ex-military, I must be currently employed as a cop. At the very least, if I'm in a corporate environment, I must be maybe a private security team. And of course, you get those that look at me and see something else, especially now that I've grown a little facial hair. I might be one of those white supremacists. Now, I throw out the charge that this woman was racist against me. This black woman was racist against me, a white man. And I know immediately some people are going to say that's ridiculous. I've actually seen this many times in the past is uh, the charge that... Only white people are racist, or only white people can be racist, that non-whites can't be racist because of, I guess, how certain people define racism. I guess racism, there's two different camps of how people define what is racism. The first camp describes or defines racism as being prejudiced or discriminatory against any group. Uh, that's the the standard definition I think most people think of that racism is just being prejudicial against any other group of people that you don't belong to. Although I guess you could be pre prejudicial against a group that you do belong to, but that would be unusual. And then there is another camp that says only white people really can be racist because their defini definition of racism is the majority group, you know, the, the, the group in power or the, the most popular group, you know, populist group in this case, you know, here in the, the United States, white people are a majority race. So we're the only ones that can be racist because of, of the way certain people define that term racism. It's us <laughs> being prejudicial against the minorities. And by that definition, you know, it's, it's minorities being racist against the majority is not even considered. It's not even a possibility. But I think that is a uh, twisted and convoluted way to view racist actions. I think that's a, basically an excuse, a way to excuse yourself from being a racist if you're not white and you subscribe to that philosophy. My opinion, anybody can be, be racist. 
Racism has nothing to do, really, with what group you belong to anyway. I don't think it's a white, black, or Hispanic, or Asian kind of thing. Racism isn't institutional. Again, it's, it's not about the group you belong to. Racism is individual. Racism has nothing to do with what group you belong to. Uh, racism isn't institutional. Again, it's not about the group. Uh, racism, it's individual. Right. Racism is all about you, the individual. At the end of the day, we're all racist to a greater or lesser extent. All of us are racist. That is, we've all developed preconceptions about one another. Now, we vary in our success as far as how we resist stereotyping people how we resist those stereotypes from person to person from day to day. But this is not only a problem with white people. Again, it's a problem with all people, all individuals. And the fact that we could all be labeled as racist, does that word hold any real meaning? Why throw that word around? I never use such a term. I avoid really all those ism terms and as, as much as I can in my personal life. And I suggest you do the same because those words are really, they're, they're just words. They're just labels, meaningless labels. The truth is, with many black Americans especially, I see too many latching on to racism as a crutch. It is an excuse for everything that is wrong with their lives as far as, you know, uh, you're, you're not, nobody is as successful in life as what they uh, want to be. Most of us, 95% of us really have these hangups where we fail at some aspect of life and we need somebody or something else, some external factor to blame for our inequities. So black people, their crutch, of course, is racism, but other races also latch on to various crutches, maybe not in the form of racism. Uh, white people here in America, I also often see them, they, their crutch for many of them is religion is everything that's wrong in their life is a factor of maybe God or the devil or just fate, bad luck. Basically, it's this. I have not achieved what I wanted to in life and there's no way it could be my fault. It must be some other influence that is holding me back. The truth, though, is that most people are in fact failures. As such, most people need some sort of crutch. For many African Americans, that crutch, of course, is racism. Now, for successful black Americans, obviously, they don't need that sort of crutch, right? They, they've never needed it, probably. So how are these successful black Americans, especially here in the U.S., how are they viewed within their communities, the black community? Well, they're often seen as sellouts or Uncle Toms, and that the only reason they ever achieved anything really is because they sucked up to the white man. What a cynical and nihilistic view of things. <laughs> what they're essentially saying is that they, blacks, are forever doomed to wallow in misery and poverty. They're, they have no chance of ever eventually bettering themselves in any way. No matter what they do or attempt to do, nothing will change in their life. Now, I mentioned white people have their own crutches, too, including racial crutches. Some white people do use racism as a crutch. Think about recent political elections where a lot of, especially rural white people voted for Donald Trump. I don't want to get into a political discussion here. I don't like discussing politics ever on this channel. But one of the big things was the wall, the wall between the U.S. and Mexico to keep the Mexicans from coming in. Why? It's because Trump did a very good job. Most many politicians do this. You see, see this all the time with nationalist politics is you know, what, what is wrong with this country or what is wrong with you? Why are you failing at, at life? It's because of, again, some external factor, some factor that's not part of all of us. And what, did it, what is it in our case? It is all the Mexicans coming in. That is the reason that you're failing at your job or that you lost your job, that you're unemployed, that you have no money, that you're lonely, that you're unhappy. That's a crutch if I've ever seen one. Circling them back around to the incident that happened to me at work, I will be leaving my current job. I have put in a resignation. I will be moving on to, to something else. So I've got something else already lined up. I will be moving on to a, a different workplace. Full disclosure, me leaving my current job 
really didn't have anything to do with this particular incident. I was already thinking about leaving anyway for other more serious <laughs> incidents actually than this one. I don't want to discuss that though. But I do have another job lined up. How will it affect the YouTube channel? Probably not much actually. If anything, it may be a positive for me and the YouTube channel because the new job I'm going to, I will be able to work a much more regular schedule than the crazy kind of rotating schedule. I never knew what I was working week to week as far as what hours what, was I working mornings, evenings, late nights, overnights, uh, weekends. I never knew what kind of schedule I was. So it's hard to plan things for the channel. So the new job will be a little bit more of a regular schedule, although I probably will work more hours, strangely enough, at the new job. That's me, though. I, I typically work a lot of hours no matter what job I'm working. I, I'm kind of a workaholic, always have been. But you guys are going to get the same content. You're going to get the usual content. Will you get more content? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, for me to produce more content, I probably would have to cut down on some of my work hours a little bit from what I've been doing the last couple of years. You guys that help support me on Patreon, by the way, really do a great job as far as you guys. Without you guys, of course, I couldn't buy any of the equipment that I've bought in the last couple of years to do the channel. So I really want to thank you guys, you guys that help support me. Without you guys, I, I couldn't do any of this. Going forward, as hopefully more people support me through things like Patreon, maybe with more support, I can kind of cut back on my real job work hours and maybe focus on the channel more. That certainly is a goal of mine at some point is to, to take this a little more serious than, than what I currently do. Getting back to the topic at hand, though, the woman that accused me, I must say that I'm not really angry at the woman. Like, I didn't get mad at these accusations or this report or this letter she made. I've long ago figured out that getting angry at, at, at people is pointless. You see this many times, especially people that that don't work in a kind of service industry. If you've never worked in retail or food service or hospitality or anything. You don't deal with people on a regular basis, sometimes difficult people. Many people tend to get angry when, when people act. For example, say somebody comes into a store you're working in and they're visibly drunk. Many people's first reaction is to get angry at that person. But what is getting angry going to do? Is you getting angry at that person? Are they magically going to sober up? Probably not. You getting angry at somebody for being stupid or acting stupid, is it going to make them smarter? Definitely not. So me getting mad at this woman for really just being ignorant, is that going to do anything for, for her? Definitely not. It's definitely not going to make me feel any better either. So why bother? It's wasted energy. And again, the hours kind of things I do in life, uh, I try to minim minimize wasting energy as much as possible. So getting angry at pointless things, not something I do. Plus, I can't really relate to this this person anyway, this lady that reported me because I'm not wrapped up in race the way she is. Uh, I, I can't really relate to those kinds of people, those people that identify primarily with their race. I guess that's why I spend so much time on the Internet, you know, where most of our communication, you know, is not face to face. So I have no idea, you know, what color most of the folks that I'm engaging with on the Internet are. I don't know what color you are, what what gender you are, your religion or lack thereof, your sexual preference, your disabilities, any of that stuff. Communicating via plain text, especially in IRC chat or in email or social platforms, it really lessens the chance that anybody's going to throw around any of these charges of racism. Um, it doesn't pervade the Internet the way you know, it pervades society at large. I don't want to go off on a long grand here, so I'll just wrap this up in closing here. I would just like to make a statement really to all of you, regardless of color, that if you use the terms racism or racist often in your lexicon, why do you do so? If you are using racism as an excuse for why you're poor, uneducated, unsuccessful, unhappy, lonely, then racism is not actually what you think it is. For you, Racism is just a cop-out. As always, before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They're the producers of the show. They're my highest-tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without those guys, this show would not be possible. The show is also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen. You, you guys see all those names on the screen over there. 
Those guys help support my work over on Patreon. Again, without each and every one of them, this show would not be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.